Raheem still speaking about Unit 1, but yeah. this time for Music Through the Years. Oh, yeah. um, same first question again. Um, I want to know what source material you used and how you interpreted that for each scene. Oh, so you can link it to specific scenes that you were involved in. Yeah, um, oh, yep. Is there anything else? No, so I just want to know um, what sort of source material you use, whether it was videos, interviews, um, news articles, did you watch like um, bits of music, stuff, yeah. clips, um, and then how do you use that and if you did that, if you feel you did it in a creative way? I think it was creative and like we, we sort of developed our, like what we did on stage because um, the materials that we did use and what was given. Like um, it was through the years, so we like obviously we weren't born in them years before the nineties or whatever, and we had to do a bit of research on what how they used to dance and stuff, and it, like the jives and stuff. You just trying to get that into rhythm. Um, so we just like internet we looked at hairspray and stuff, and uh, I think we looked at uh, a song called Rock Around the Clock and the how they were dancing, like jivey seventies. Good music and um, yeah, internet again, really. I think. So in terms of looking at the the dances that you've mentioned, sort yeah. of rock around the clock, the jive, and then the hairspray. Mm -hmm. um, do you think so? With them, you sort of directly applied what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thinking more of like an interpretive thing now, with your other scenes. Um, do you think you looked at any research and then developed that for your own sort of Oh yeah, definitely. Sort of like, um, there was the minor scene and we thought that's from the 80s and maybe we could fit that in as an acting element because everyone in the 80s will remember that as a big thing, like the strikes and stuff. So we thought if you do that like at the beginning of the 80s or the middle of the 80s, it will come out more, if you know what I mean. Like, um, We'll show that we've done the research as well as just doing it for fun because we had placards and stuff. So again, you were looking at the social yeah, definitely issues like at the time. Obviously, unemployment was very high back then. And the strikes um, were a major part of that, I think. And the gangster scene as well at the beginning. Um, we looked at prohibition, so people weren't allowed to drink and stuff. Uh, so we thought, what, what did they used to do in bars and clubs then? So we thought, um, to just went there to look at girls basically. <laughs> That's what our perception of it was. So we had the flappers and the gangsters, really um, 30s style gangsters and stuff. So it was really exciting to perform that because we'd never done that sort of thing before. And it was exciting because we never like, got got to go out while I was performing, it's, it's funny. Um, thinking about another scene that you're involved in and um, sort of left to your own devices to devise, um, it was the the Beatles Abbey Road. Oh yeah. Um, how did you come up with that idea because you could have just formed a Beatles band and sort of done a tribute act yeah. version, what made you think outside the box with that? I thought it's just a bit cheesy, you know, just getting a Beatles band up and I love the Beatles and like, I don't think anyone could like recreate what they did and stuff so I thought, um, I was looking at the Beatles stuff and Abbey Road stuck out for me and like how that picture just worldwide in it like um, so I thought um, what could we could we do is if we could get a, a mat or something and just paint the zebra crossing and get four Beatles lookalikes and I'd just stand there and a photographer coming out, which was me, and taking the picture and bringing a comical side of it because I came on with a thing and trying to put the mat down and stuff. And I think with John helping me at the end, it was a bit funny because he was a helpful person at the end, wasn't he? Um, so looking at all the scenes that you're involved in, mm. do you think you were able to communicate a meaning to the audience within each. So we've just spoke about using the Beatles and sort of getting a comedy roll through, mm. but then you've always spoke about the change within John Lennon mm. 
towards the end and then using that towards the end of your piece, yeah. which was quite a clever link. Um, do you think you were able to communicate a meaning like that within everything that you were involved in? I think so, yeah, because every hairspray was about um, segregation and so we had uh, two black uh, people in the in the dance and they they didn't mind because they knew how it was and it's not like that anymore and they knew how it was back then and they thought it would be good to show the audience what happened in America back then because it, it was America that like everyone was looking at back then and thought what they're doing here and then um, from that we just thought we'd do something else with um, what was the other one now the rave scene um, with like drugs and stuff there was a big influence in the 90s the beginning of the 90s anyway and uh, we thought it was a brilliant idea of coming up with that sort of thing because people born in the 90s will remember that in the 80s or whatever but remember the 90s scene like the Manchester or whatever raving and stuff so I think we link that to we, we always think about what the audience will think of it we always think what if the audience will relate to that if, if, it, if it didn't we just chucked it out because there's no point if it don't relate to the audience in my eyes like if it so is, that was the focus of your devising yeah, sessions yeah. would the audience get this yeah, would they remember it would they relate yeah, to and it I, and I think um, doing it to the learning difficulties at the beginning really helped us because they if they understand it maybe other people will as well, so I think it was a good idea getting, you know, the learning difficulty students in and just giving us some feedback and we enjoyed the feedback and we enjoyed watching them and stuff, so it's good, yeah. Taking all that feedback on board that you got yeah. um, from your different audiences, your tutors mm -hmm. and your peers, mm -hmm. um, what sort of future suggestions would you make in order to develop this piece again for future youth? Well, in my eyes, it, I think that was the best thing we've done all year, but uh, improvements. Um, do you think you'd use the same sort of icons from them periods, or do you think there were some that we missed? Yeah, I think there was some that we missed, because um, obviously it's the Stone Roses were a big influence in the late 80s to kids around the world, like Spike Carl and Millions were like that, and uh, I thought maybe if you did a Stone Roses kind of tribute kind of thing, people would alert to that as well as a, like we did Oasis and stuff and obviously everyone's just like, I think the audience were really related to everything that happened. We had the older people and we had the younger and it related to everyone, young and old, like different generations and you could see like, you could see like people smiling in the audience every time, you know, when One Direction kids came on and the kids were screaming and when like the Beatles came on you could see like all people smiling and thinking oh, I remember them days and, all. and you just get a feeling and the feedback. So would you still keep the same sort of audience family friendly yeah, throughout all the years? Yeah definitely yeah because I think that's the best way that sort of show is you know what I mean even though we did have a bit like where we thought oh well we'll what will happen here but obviously it, it got good feedback and stuff so we, I mean, we won't change anything really, apart from you know, the people that we miss. But you can't really say that you would have done it different because uh, I loved it. Anything else you want to add about the show? Yeah, it was hard learning dances and stuff as well <laughs> because I'm not good with my feet and it was a hard challenge for me. So I like a challenge, and we just learned that, especially the rock around the clock one. Because how was the workshop one. process for the dances then? So you mentioned in Rock Around the Clock, you spent quite a few <coughs> rehearsals on that one. Yes. So we How did that, yeah. because you had um, quite a bit of influence in that as well, because there were sections that you made up on your own. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. did you find that? How did you manage to sort of use the workshop process yeah. to develop your ideas? Yeah, so when we were in them lessons, we just they showed us the clips, what they wanted us to do, and we thought that would be a good era where they all dance and stuff. And I thought... Um, Oh, I've got the question again. What's the question? So, how did you use the workshop process oh, yeah, the workshop. to develop the dances? Oh, yeah. How did and how was it different to developing maybe the acting scenes? Oh yeah, definitely. Because um, I'm not saying like acting, you sit down and stuff, but with the dance, you can always change what you want to do, like choreo what's it? choreography. Yeah, that's the word. And uh, you just change what you want to do and stuff. But we had the set thing, and then what we wanted to do, and I think the uh, the workshops helped us a lot because 
obviously, in, when we go to the workshop, we always stuck, oh, we're in the 70s now, so we just danced into the same like they did in the 70s, and I found it interesting, like, how everyone's mind frame was in different classes. Once you walked into another class, you'd be in the 90s, and then you'd come back, and you'd be in the 70s again, and it was just, like, weird how, like... So you think was, each workshop enabled you to get into that yeah, sort of was, time zone? Yeah, because it was different and stuff, like... And the running order that it was in, obviously it was through the years, but um, that was exciting to do because everyone was a bit nervous at first and that I made that idea up, so uh, <laughs> extra marks please. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to add, Thank you very much. <laughs>